um, first question, how can we make ourselves uh, consistent uh, to follow Islamic teaching in our daily life? I mean, it's so hard to uh, be consistent. After coming to this event, I will pray five times a day, stay away from inshallah, sins. Inshallah. But after a couple of weeks or months, it, it, it works. Those down. things will fall apart. And second, uh, quick one, uh, do you have any tips on how to overcome the feel of being guilty for your action in the past? You mentioned past is the past, but sometimes it bothers your head. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Guilt is something that is good when it comes to the bad that you've done. But the fact that you feel the guilt must not make you doubt the fact that you are forgiven by Allah. You are embarrassed. Say, for example, the embarrassment of cheating on someone or the embarrassment of doing something bad. And then the person says, don't worry, it's over. It's OK. But every time you see them, you're like, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. That, that guilty feeling is not because you are doubting the forgiveness. But because you are embarrassed, I shouldn't have. When you know the status of your maker and how big he is and how, how great he is, you feel embarrassed of how as little as I am, I was transgressing against the one who created entire creation. You know, there is something called the James Webb Telescope. Have you heard of it? You go and Google it today. James Webb Telescope. I promise you, check. It's a telescope that, that, is, that is bringing us images from outer space. Do you know there are so many millions and millions of planets which they never ever knew existed and galaxies that they didn't know existed. Now they are suddenly seeing all of this. It's just mind boggling. And Allah mentions it in the Quran and Allah tells us about Jannah and Allah tells us how the earth is so insignificant as per the rest of his creation. And Allah says it. The creation of the skies and the earth is far bigger than the creation of man. But man doesn't know. Many men don't know. And so on. So that feeling of guilt, it will come. Don't worry. For as long as it is not a feeling of guilt, which makes you doubt the mercy of Allah, it's a good thing. But if it makes you doubt the mercy of Allah, then you have a problem with recognizing who Allah is. That's the second part of what you asked. The first part of it, my brother, when we decide I'm going to pray, I'm going to do the right thing, I'm going to do whatever I have to, I'm going to be the kindest and most amazing human being possible. One of the most powerful gifts you can have is good company. Your companions, your friends, you need to either encourage them, either you need to encourage your friends, look, we're going to do this together. So prayer time, we all pray. Uh, when you have to go to eat, you make sure there is no, meaning you don't consume anything that is not allowed, etc. When you have to do something, you make sure you do the right thing. When there is something wrong, because you are in good company, you don't even look. I remember one of the youngsters was telling me that, you know, when I'm with good people, even if there is nudity, we don't even look because we are with each other talking so on. So, but when you're alone, you're like, mm, you know, looking all the way. And then you justify because the hadith says, you know, the first nadra is not, is, is not against you. The guy says, say, what are you doing? Look down. He says, but it's still my first. Come on. <laughs> so may Allah forgive us. So good company is a really good thing. Consistency. Secondly, when you have a connection with some masjid near you or some scholar or some in your community and you, you or even online, get used to a habit of listening every so often to some speech. I give you one last example. Jumu'ah is Friday. Jumu'ah comes from Jama'ah. Jama'ah means to gather. So the importance of gathering in Islam is so much that you are taught you must go for Jumu'ah. Whenever you are called for, on, on, for prayer on a Friday, you rush towards the remembrance of Allah, the reminder, the speech. Dhikrillah here is referring to that, that Jumu'ah, the, the, the khutbah and the salah, you go for it, right? Why? Once a week, you need to listen to a powerful short message to remind you, hey, remember what we agreed, right? So every week, once minimum, listen to a good talk that will remind you again. No, no, no. Improve your situation until a day comes when inshallah, you will automatically be cured of all of that. It's like cough mixture. You cannot have the whole bottle one time. Doctor will say have one spoon every day. At the same time, so you have a spoon, coffee is less, have a spoon, coffee is less, another spoon. By the time few days are up, when your course is over, the coffee is gone. What happened? You had little by little, but if you drink the whole bottle, you will cough more after a while. That's why when you swing and you have no coping mechanism, 
people say they shahada and they come into Islam. If there is no follow up with such beautiful brothers and sisters, they begin to dilly dally. I always say Islam is knowledge based. The more you know, the more you will love it. When you don't know much, you start to doubt it. You don't know because you don't have the answers. But the answers are there. Keep on asking until you receive a satisfactory response. So good company as well as listening and attending maybe online classes. Like I say, you might be a businessman or whoever else. You might not have the time to go, especially in Jakarta where the traffic is so much. You may not be able to go here. Use technology. Use technology. Before I came here, they already told me machet, big masala. So I learned a little bit of bahasa. I said, when I go there, I will just, you know, flex a bit of my bahasa. Allah bless you guys. Barakallahu.